Good evening, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to this special news report on possible government shutdown. I'm live here in Washington, D.C. at the Capitol building, and I'm inside the Capitol building, as you can see. I'm Riley King, and let's begin this special news report. First step, Americans more likely to blame Trump Republicans if government shut down poll. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. than not having a warm coat when it's freezing outside. That's why we're at Burlington. They have coats for play, work, the weekend, at prices you would not believe. Wow. Hey, cold weather. We're ready for you. <laughs> Thanks, Burlington. We always come to Burlington to buy our coats. And we also come to give them back to help those in need. Can't beat the brands, the styles. And when we donate a coat at Burlington, we get 10% off our entire purchase. It makes buying coats here even more meaningful. Bring in your coats. Chief White House Correspondent John Carl as well. And John, let's, start, let's begin there with you. Yesterday you said the president was MIA in this shutdown fight. He got involved then right after our program yesterday, but kind of complicated matters. Uh, he did. He suggested he was actually against or had problems with the Republican plan to keep the government open. That was early in the morning. But, George, by the end of the day, the president was actively engaged in getting those conservatives, the Freedom Caucus, that had uh, suggested they would vote no, getting them to v vote in favor of the bill and getting it passed in the House. Now you have this dynamic, and Mary mentioned it, a very troubling dynamic where both sides are absolutely convinced that the other side will pay the price for a shutdown. Down. That is a recipe for a drawn-out stalemate. And, and Mary, that means we don't have a real good sense of how this is all going to unfold today, kind of in uncharted waters. Exactly, George. We know the Senate is moving forward on track to have this vote on this short-term spending plan later today, but all signs indicate that vote would likely fail. Now, I have talked to lawmakers on both sides of the aisle who are now calling for a short, short-term extension, just a couple extra days here to buy them some more time to negotiate, but leadership right now doesn't seem to be on board with that. Right now, George, it's really hard to see how they can avoid this shutdown. And that means a shutdown could come. And John Carl, does the administration have their contingency plans in place? Well, every single federal agency, George, has put up a guidance. This is the one for the Department of Homeland Security. It's on their website for the contingency plan of what would happen. This one for Homeland Security is 45 pages long. But primarily, George, what is happening now is you will see the administration try to make the case that Democrats are hurting the military, hurting children, uh, causing pain because they are pushing us towards a shutdown. The president is scheduled to fly to Mar-a-Lago uh, later today. I am told he will not go if, the, if we are headed to a shutdown. Okay, John Mary, thanks very much. Okay, and there you go on that video. Here's how a government shutdown could affect you. Let's take a listen to the video from ABC News. There's nothing worse than not having a warm coat when it's freezing outside. That's why we're at Burlington. They have coats for play, work, the weekend, at prices you would not believe. Wow. Hey, cold weather. We're ready for you. <laughs> Thanks, Burlington. We always come to Burlington to buy our coats. And we also come to give them back to help those in need. Can't beat the brands, the styles. And when we donate a coat at Burlington, we get 10% off our entire purchase. It makes buying coats here even more meaningful. Bring in your coats shutdown could have a major impact on millions. For more on this, we're going to bring in our chief national correspondent, Tom Yamas. Good morning, Tom. So break it on down for us. Robin, good morning to you. You know, we just heard from Mary and John. The blame game is on in D.C. about this potential shutdown. But the ones who stand to lose the most from this are the American people. Let's break it down. Let's take a closer look at this right now. First up, the American economy. Back in 2013, the last time a shutdown happened, it cost the economy $1.5 billion a day. Why? Government 
government funds in some cases are put on hold. Now, if the government does shut down, two things you don't have to worry about, mail and air travel. We will still get our mail, and air traffic controllers will continue to work. But if there is a shutdown, the last time this happened in 2013, nearly 800,000 federal employees were without pay. More than a million delayed paychecks, including service members who were not paid until later. And also, if you're looking to get a business loan, if you're looking to buy a home, your loan could be put on hold because of those government funds that aren't up and running. Now, in case you were wondering, Members of Congress, will they still get paid? The ones responsible for the shutdown? Of course, they will still get their paychecks because their salaries are written into permanent law. And Robin, in case anyone out there is wondering, essential military services will still be up and running even if there is a shutdown. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Bad timing. Shutdown threat shadows Trump one year festivities. Talk about lousy timing. President Donald Trump had hoped to spend the weekend celebrating the one-year anniversary of his inauguration. Now, he's facing a potential government shutdown. Trump scrapped plans to depart Friday from his Mar-a-Lago club in Florida, where he was to attend a high-dollar fundraiser Saturday night. Instead, he spent the afternoon in the Oval Office trying to stave off the shutdown. By late afternoon, it remained unclear whether a deal would be reached, and by Friday evening, Budget Director Mickey Mulvey told reporters he didn't expect Trump to make the trip back today. But the timing was undeniable, unfortunate for a president trying to steer the conversation away from controversy and back to his first year accomplishment. Trump was originally scheduled to attend a Trump victory dinner Saturday night at Margar Lago with proceeds going to a joint fundraising committee for his re-election campaign and the Republican National Committee. That was up in the air as the budget negotiations dragged on. If a deal isn't reached by midnight, the revulsions will be felt across Washington, all over the nation, and within White House residents. According to federal speculations, just 21 of 96 members of the White House residential staff would report to duty on any day of a shut down. Electricians and engineers would also report for duty to ensure the safety of the facility in the mansion, Grimser said. And now let's take a live look in live video feed and see what is happening on the floor where the Senate are trying to reach an agreement before midnight. Let's listen in.
And that is a little bit of the Senate debate government spending bill inside the debate room area. And that does it for my special news report on possible government shutdown right here on the Riley King Network. I'm Riley King reporting in Washington, D.C. inside the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. Again, here's an inside look of it behind me. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your Friday night, and I'll be back tomorrow with another news report, and we'll keep you updated on the possible government shutdown. They have until midnight to make an agreement. If not, then the government shutdown starts. Have a wonderful rest of your night, everyone. Good night. Bye.